Hello, it's Jimmy here I just got a mini diesel here to look at. Okay, so this is a customer complaint here. It's got this uh, message on continue, continue the journey um, to fix the problem basically, but they've been driving it uh, for at least a few hundred miles and it's not, it's not going away. So I haven't even tried to start it yet. Where's the button? Down here. And let's start it up and see what, what happens. It's a manual so I'm putting the clutch. Uh, I can't remember how to work these. There's a button here, is it? Does that do anything? Okay, so I can't see how to switch it if we've got an engine management light on, but I take it we have. Okay, so I seem to yeah figure that out. The engine light comes on down there when you switch the ignition on. So I'm using a launch Euro Tab 3 scan tool. I'm just going to set up a quick scan. Again. Okay, we're in. Okay, we've got the diagnostic system in here. I'm just going to do a quick scan on the full systems. Right, we're done. What is that one? Footwell module. Reverse light. Programming error, CAS. Uh, particle filter system. Air system, air to EGR, plausibility. Right, that's going to be the cause of the problem right there. Okay, got the banner open. Now we just need to figure out where that plausibility is coming from must be a leak somewhere of course first I'll just do a little visual check see if I can see anything obvious do have some oil residue down in that area down there get this cover off it's coming over here behind the airbox gonna release the clamp from the hose should be able to now pull that up Well, we've got a big problem down here. Let's uh, get this plug disconnected. Now that's off, pull this back a little bit. Oh, we've got pipe here attached. Let's get that disconnected. Okay, we've got that off. So away from that, over here is where we have a lot of oil looks like it's maybe coming from the gasket here I'm not sure yet um, could be this pipe that's this pipe here could maybe split I can't really see at the minute have to have a little better look around got oil all over the gearbox down there so I'm gonna do a smoke test just need to get this little filter out here okay I'm using this smoke leak detector here and we're going to switch it on. So now we should see some smoke coming from here. Yeah. And this is a little bladder bag that we can just stick in there and then inflate it to seal it off. So we'll let that run for a few minutes. And we're surely gonna see some smoke from this area. I just want to see exactly where. Let's get this torch on. So it looks like we may have a split on that rubber hose down there. I'm not sure, can't really see it it's very clear. The problem with oil is when it starts leaking, it goes everywhere, so it's, it is sometimes difficult to pinpoint where it's come from. I'm not sure if it's coming from the gasket here or this one or that pipe at the minute. Okay, so not the tube. Oh, 
Where is that coming from? Is it the gasket? Okay, so it's coming from where that metal tube inserts from the cooler into the intake manifold here. Got that, see that little pipe? Where that seals into the plastic. That's where it's leaking from. So I'm not sure what's going on with this clip, but there's literally no way to open it. There's no... It's just a complete sealed join. So I've literally just put a slice in that and I'm just trying to now break it without having to cut through the, the rubber tube itself. I've got it split now. Get to this. So whose idea was that? Okay, so I'm under the car here, trying to disconnect this tube here, but the complete intercooler is a bit fragile. It's all moving, as you can see, and I don't want to damage it. So I'll just cut this one off here as well. So with a bit of fiddling, we managed to pull that tube out. Just getting some of these bolts off here. Oh, it looks like that's a captive nut. So with those bolts out, there's no movement on that without taking these bolts off over here and it looks like they're pretty prone to snapping and they're quite difficult to access uh, might be better off taking out the intake manifold here so we just open all of those bolts along there Okay, so just down here we have another 10mm bolt there on that. So it looks like the seal just sitting off crooked. Okay so I'm starting to put this back together, put that seal back in, it just looks like the seal was off, offline, someone's someone's clearly um, had this apart, pushed it back in and the seals went in wonky. Uh, asked the customer, has anyone been working on the car and he said no the problem with the DPF light came on within a day after they bought the car so you don't know what someone's been doing beforehand uh, it's obviously been sold because of because of this issue and he's only had the car not long a few weeks so we've got this pipe now clamped up with a 70 mil hose clamp okay so we've got that pipe on like i said we've got the bolts back on here we didn't actually need to remove those because i thought we might have had some flex in that but we didn't these bolts are all back on this bolt here that holds the pipe one here that holds this little module um, to plug for this and that's 13 mm bolt there for that uh, live feed I just had all that tucked over there so that's all back together and we've just put the same clip on the bottom holes there okay we're going to set up the smoke test again all right we've got that running I'll let that run for say five minutes and look at that absolutely perfect get that cleaned off a little bit no more leaks okay back in the car we're gonna go to data stream and exhaust emissions let's just select all of those see what we have sort of 15 millibars idle we'll accelerate it up 
Where is the river? Um, rev count on there. Rev that up. Sort of 125 millibars. So we'll let that idle back down. So it's slightly high, that should be sort of around sort of say 5 millibars there. And on revs maybe 50, 60 millibars. So it's a little bit high. Um, okay, we're gonna clean the DPF out. Okay, I've got the fluid now, cleaning fluid for the DPF mixed into this bottle launch UK DPF cleaning fluid. That's the stuff there. So I'm gonna get this injected in through the exhaust system. Put that open there. Out. Just gonna twist this off. Okay, I've got that out. I'm just gonna insert this down in the hole there. I can squeeze the trigger. Get that down in there. I'm gonna run this one with the engine running because the CPF is quite close to the turbo and it sits higher than the cylinders. So we're gonna do it with the engine running. Just gonna hold this trigger pulled until all the contents are gone. Give the car a few accelerations. Okay, we're down around uh, seven millibars at idle. So far, we'll rev it up again. 55, we're only a couple of minutes in, so it might decrease a little bit further than that. But that's plenty good enough there. Anything under 100 is fine. And like I said, anything around under 10, ideally around five on idle there. So I'm gonna exit there, uh, exit again. Go to special functions up here. Drive particle filter. I'm gonna set that as a replacement. Otherwise, these codes won't clear. Reset the values. F1. Okay, so that's been reset. Now I'm gonna clear all of these codes. We'll go back into the ECM. Go back to the data stream again and we're going to take it on a test drive. So we'll just select all of those items now. So as soon as we move away we can see the regeneration has been activated. So just taking the car on a nice test drive now. Good 20 minute test drive at least. Okay, we're back from a test drive. We're gonna exit the uh, data stream. Sorry, the screen needs to focus there. Okay, we're gonna go back. Okay, so that's it. We're all finished on that mini. See you in the next video.